Hey, this is <clears throat> Exploring Creation with Physical Science, 3rd Edition Student Notebook. Um, Mrs. Wigton here, and a dot, a random dot, on my um, my camera lens that is dust that I cannot get out of the, the um, lens. So it is stuck there, and we get a, it gets to join us today. It'll be our little friend. So we are um, diving into Module 10, Halfway through already we're on page 307 <clears throat> and um, we're going to start out with the behavior of light so um, we've got three types we have transparent translucent and opaque you need to know the difference between them transparent is when you can see through like glasses or a window that's clear translucent is when it's not quite clear this is a picture of my grandma I used to have these kind of sliding glass doors on her bathtub and you could kind of see who like is that a dog or is that a human you're just not sure but you can see here's a picture in the book of translucent you can kind of see that it's uh, mottled glass there and opaque is means like a wall or anything my table right here boom totally can't see through it this book can't see through it it's opaque okay so those are the three different main um, behaviors of light um, and these can be um, let's see here transmitted transparent is trans this is what's happening to the light light is transmitted here the light is reflected and here the light is opaque or sorry absorbed opaque is absorbed the light is absorbed just eats it all up okay so there we go and um we're gonna return to the next page 308 i'm going as quick as i can to keep this short for you guys um what is the angle of incidence um these are referring the answers are referring to the um the experiment that we did in class um in challenge one um and this book has in it when we had the flashlight and on the paper with the angles and drawn all over it and um, we shone the light into a pan full of water sitting on top of it the angle of the light ray from the flashlight light made with a perpendicular line this is the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection was um, the reflected ray made that was on the outside um, of the glass pan made with a perpendicular line and we will look more in depth at what these two definitions mean so don't worry if that doesn't make sense to you right now okay we will get there but this right here is important and when anybody is who is like a teacher is telling you something like this man this is a hint it's probably on a test so law of reflection is the angle of reflection equals the angle of incidence. What is the law of reflection? The angle of reflection equals the angle of incidence. Does it mean these two are the same thing? It just means their angles are equal to each other. So if the angle of reflection is 45 degrees, the angle of incidence is 45 degrees. They are going to equal each other. Don't forget, what is the law of reflection? Angle of reflection and angle of incidence are equal to each other. All right, so I didn't um, fill in this um, on your own because I just described to you very clearly what those three things are, opaque, transparent, tr translucent, and I felt like we covered it pretty well. Um, but this one I did fill in um, because even though we did cover um, that we have transparent um, is, uh, is transmitted, um, <clears throat> translucent is reflected, and opaque is absorbed, um, it didn't cover these three um, uh, subcategories of what happens when light is transmitted um, through something see-through. It can be either refracted, polarized, or scattered. And we're going to um, cover those in more depth, but um, I really wanted to point out the difference between reflection and refraction. And um, that is because I think it's important to recognize that the one that comes with the transparent, um, transmitted light, um, transparent um, mediums, trans the light is transmitted through them and it can be refracted. And this is through translucent 
um, mediums and is reflected. Um, and or it could be just a little bit reflected. Um, like for instance, um, right above me, so you can see this. Um, so that's Mrs. Wigton. Hi! Oh, this, so you can see my face, kind of. There you go. And um, I have morning crazy hair. And um, what you're going to do is, is recognize that that light that you see is being reflected and some of it's being refracted. So um, people outside could see me and so some of uh, my image and the light that's um, bouncing off of me can be seen by people outside and that's ref um, refracted light. And what you and I are seeing right now is reflected. So pretty neat, huh? All right, so back to the book. <clears throat> um, draw the path of the, of the light ray in the diagram below. Show where the light eventually hits the screen. Okay, so um, this is a light ray. We're just doing individual light rays right here. It hits a mirror and then it bounces off this mirror, hits this mirror and hits the screen. Well, what's what are my little dots here? Well, let me just explain to the, this to you. This is the angle of incidence and this is just showing what a perpendicular line to my mirror would be and the um, light bouncing off of it would be the angle of reflection. Okay, so this is the incidence, it's the actual um, light ray that initially hits it. Now this is the reflected ray, light ray, but now that reflected light ray becomes the angle of incidence for this mirror. Okay, <clears throat> and then do you notice how these are perfectly um, like a butterfly, symmetrical to each other? And likewise here, and so if this is, um, I don't know, 75 degrees, this is 75 degrees from the mirror as well. Okay, so angle of incidence here, angle of what here? Reflection. Okay, and it could, if this had been a mirror, this could have been the angle, become the angle of incidence over here. And boy, it probably would have bounced that way, right? Could have kept going. Do, 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 do. All right. <laughs> oh, okay. <clears throat> Moving on, we're on page 310. Um, what fact does the text say is a general rule of physics? And that's light rays bend when refracted. And that's what we were just looking at. Light rays bend when refracted. Explain the two general rules. Um, see diagram next page. <laughs> I feel like how I fed myself notes. And now I have, it's like a never-ending little, um, let's do now go here. It's scavenger hunt. Okay, 374. Mm, I turned a lot of pages just now. All right, I'm going to use their picture here. It's a lot better than mine. It's got actual words on it you can read and everything. So we're on page 374, figure 1029. And um, they've got a wonderful description here of what's happening. So we were just looking at um, the mirror um, or the, the window in front of me. And this is a very similar situation where some of the light gets refracted through the, the water. Some of it gets reflected. Um, what's big difference here is that um, this is thicker than my window here. And um, the water um, and the glass, I'm sure, both slow the light down. And when it slows it down, it's going to bend the light um, and it's not going to go straight through, okay? So it's going to bend it, bend it. Um, because this is slowing it down, it's going to bend it toward the um, perpendicular line, okay? And um, this will come out as the, like we did before, the butterfly um, angle of incidence, angle of reflection, okay? So here we go. We're going to do this again. And this is going to hit, this is going a certain light speed here. I'm going to hit this angle of, or this edge of the glass, and some of it's going to be reflected. So we have a new angle of incidence and angle of reflection. And they should match. It doesn't look like they do, but they do. They should match. And then, um, <clears throat> and then out here, this refraction. This, now this is refracted, and this one bent toward the, um, the, 
the uh, perpendicular line. This one's bending away from it. Why? Why is it different? Well, let me tell you, because this is air out here and light travels so much faster through air than it does through glass or water or any other kind of um, uh, medium and so it's um, going to bend away from the angle of incidence so this is because it entered something that slows it down it bent that way now it, it entered something that speeds it up it bent this way so that's what you need to recognize is the um, nature of light wanting to slow down when it hits mediums or speed up when it um, hits air and so um, that's kind of opposite of the sound waves as I understand it um, that wanted to go faster through solid mediums all right okay I think we've explained that pretty clearly let's move on we're on page 312 all right, how are fiber optics different? This looks like a whole lot. This is really simple. Don't know if this tons of cursive writing overwhelm you. Um, fiber optics is just um, like a tunnel, okay? And um, usually both reflection and refraction happen when light hits something, but with fiber optics, um, angle of incidence leads only to reflection, no refraction. And the fiber optic cables can transport light over huge distances because it cannot escape like a tunnel. So just imagine fiber optics as a tunnel carrying um, light through it and um, preventing refraction. So it just gets to go, go, and go, and go, and go, go. All right. So the next, second thing it points out about refraction is I have a, a reference to go to um, the thing here let's see here um i love this picture of um how sunlight hits a water droplet and um the whole spectrum of the sunlight um is reflected and ref and some of it is refracted into a beautiful um rainbow and um and when you do that with all the raindrops and even our spot there no, i'm just kidding <laughs> it's pretending to be one of the raindrops um <laughs> Um, that is a, um, that's what, why we see such a big, beautiful, um, visible rainbow. And, um, so they explain here in the book on page 376 <clears throat> is that where light enters the water droplet and where it leaves, watch it and look for it. And what does this tell you? Let's see, um, there must be, um, the water droplets in the air. There must be sunlight shining from behind you, and that's key. They will probably ask you how. What are the conditions under which you can see a rainbow? Okay, and you must have sun behind you. You must have raindrops in front of you, <laughs> and um, you um, must be positioned see so that the light, the water droplet, and the color separated lightly leaves the water droplet um, on the same side. So. This only happens when the sun shines on the water droplets from behind you. So really just focus on having rain and the sun behind you and you should be good. And having being at the right angle. Um, so here's a beautiful picture of the spectrum. And um, they explain um, the sun needs to be, that's what it was. The sun needs to be at a certain angle. So that's why you don't see a rainbow after every single rain shower. It depends on how high the sun is in the sky and where you are relative to that. <clears throat> okay? Um, also, you don't see all of the colors of rainbow from one water droplet, even though this picture leads you to think you do. Um, <laughs> it's more um, accurate to think that um, um, there's many, many water droplets in the air, and you see different colors from different water droplets. Um, why? Because of the angle at which the light is hitting it and, um, and how the, the light is bending um, when it leaves the water droplet. And so the red light is bent the lowest. And um, if the red light is bent low, then in order for it to reach your eyes, red light will have to come from the highest water droplets in the sky. And then violet is bent the least, so you see the light coming from the lowest water droplets in the sky when you see the, the violet. And all the ones in between are the other ones in between. So um, so in my picture right here, 
these water droplets would be the um, violet making water droplets and these would be the red um, water droplets making um, color the ones that make that color because of the angle that the light would hit them and all the ones colors in between pretty neat huh all right all right we hi we are back to page 313 and um there's some work being done across the street from my house if you hear some noise um it's either that or my kids all right so what is unpolarized light okay that is light reflecting off of snow or water like totally blinding you um it's when the light waves vibrate in all directions and just like whoa i need sunglasses like have you ever been on top of a snowy mountain and you're like i need sunglasses this is like killing my eyes well you don't just need any old sunglasses you want polarized sunglasses and so um they show us pictures of that that are pretty cool um, polarized light is light waves that vibrate in only one plane <clears throat> and um, this is um, this is an example of polarized sunglasses they take one pair here and one pair here and these have tiny little lines that um, go one direction so the light can only come in um, I believe horizontally and so when they turn them perpendicular another pair sideways right on top of them no light cannot get can get through at all um, because they just black out all the light. So that wouldn't be how I'd want to use them. That's just how um, they work. So um, here's a picture of <clears throat> polarizing filters, um, horizontal um, and then hor uh, vertical on the side, horizontal polarizing on the side. And so um, <clears throat> After unpolarized light passes through the vertical polarizing filter, it is now considered polarized light. <clears throat> if we went through both of those, there would nothing we get through, I'm pretty sure. So it would be just like that. All right, so let's turn the page. We are on 314 in our um, study guide. What is scattering? Scattering is when light rays go through the dust and water and all the other crap in the air and the light rays get redirected. And so, because um, sometimes there's pollution, that's why Mrs. Wigton said such a vulgar word. Um, there's pollution and all sorts of yuck up in the air. And um, so when the light rays either filter through that or um, <clears throat> um, reflect off of that, whatever, that is um, creating sunsets, sunrises, and blue skies. Um, have you ever wondered why we get blue skies? Well, let me just read this to you. Let's come with me over here. We're on page 379 in the textbook. It says, when the sun is high in the sky, the light waves travel more directly and so have a shorter distance to get to Earth. Tiny particles in Earth's atmosphere scatter light of blue wavelengths in all directions more than other colors of light. And so we see a blue sky. Well, how about that? All right, so um, the following is a diagram of how a light ray travels from substance A through substance B. So um, as we, um, so they, they, substance A is up here, substance P is down here. Um, does the light travel more quickly in substance A or B? So A or B? Well, how would you know? Well, you would know by the angle. Do you remember that um, uh, picture we did earlier? We looked at earlier where the light was going through the um, beaker, and the water was in the middle of it. And when it went in from the the um, air t into the water beaker, it bent toward the perpendicular line. And um, when it went through out of the beaker, it went. Um, <clears throat> This is confusing because they made their, their perpendicular line um, solid here and their substance I think that they're going through is um, dotted here, but that's okay. And then when it went out of the beaker, it went away from the dotted line. So um, the answer here is B, the reflected ray, because it went away from the perpendicular line to, um, from it. So. <clears throat> that is the answer. That is B. All right. Um, 
run 315. Man is spear fishing. I love this. He looks into the water and sees a fish in front of him and he aims the spear. Should he aim at the fish, in front of the fish, or behind the fish? Don't you ever wonder things like this? Well, if you haven't, I hope you do now. This is wonderful stuff here. I have 390, not 380. My goodness. Let me see if I can find this picture here. Here we go. All right. There he is. All of his reflection. Oh, so many things that we're going over right now. Here he is. Okay, so you can see where he sees the fish. There's the actual fish. They spelled actual wrong. And um, <clears throat> there should he spear um, at the fish, in front of the fish, or behind the fish that he sees where the dotted line is? Well, obviously, based on this picture, the actual fish is in front of the picture image he sees. And that's because... Um, the light rays have been bent. Okay, I have to put this down so I can point here. The light rays have been bent from um, from seeing. The light is reflecting off of the actual fish and bending this way. And so um, what he's seeing is we imagine it to be right here. We think it's here. But um, to take into account for that bending of the light, um, he would need to spear in front of the image he sees, right? Because that's where the real fish is. You don't want a fake fish, you want a real fish. All right. Um, have you ever heard, um, seen on a um, rear view mirror on the side of a car, it says objects in the mirror may be closer than they appear? I'll write it out for you here. Um, that's, um, I believe, in the same kind of situation. That reflection and um and knowing that um it's if, if that may be more of a magnification issue you know which is probably maybe not exactly the same thing but it's kind of similar in that um uh, it helps me remember when i see something through um something else like water and maybe even in a mirror that things may be closer than they actually appear it helps me remember which way to go with that um, what happens to light that passes through a horizontal polarizing filter? Well, only light waves vibrating on the horizontal plane get through if it's a horizontal polarizing filter. If it was a vertical polarizing filter, it would be vertical um, light waves vibrating on that plane that would get through. All right. We are on page 316. Your eyes and color. This is where it gets really, really interesting. Um, what is the reason that we see things? Well, light reflects off of things. It enters our eyes. And then our eyes detect that light. And then it sends signals to the brain, forming an image in our minds. All right. I look, I hardly notice the little dot anymore. It's kind of gone wherever it was on my screen. It's happy. All right. So um, we're going to um, try this again on the <laughs> converging and diverging lens. And um, the sides are curved outward in a convex shape here. Um, concave is the opposite of convex. And this is what that looks like. We kind of think of how it goes in like a cave. Um, and um, this is the way that I'm going to show you over here. The light travels through. Um, the, it's called the incident light ray. So it's coming in, it's the angle of incidence, and then through and out again at that angle. So when they all do that at their own respective curve, they create a point of um, focus, a focus point. Um, so that's how that, those work. Um, that would be in, you know, towards your eye here at this direction. And so um, the con cave or diverging the concave shape and the diverging lens um, brings all the light rays out okay and so that's the difference um, big difference in them we're going to look more at them in a minute on the on your own that's my chair <laughs> so horrible sound Oh, um, we have considered the two lenses pictured below and which one focuses the light rays closest to the lens? Well, the more curvature there is, the more the, the closer that the light rays focus will be to the lens. So B would be our answer on that one. <clears throat> All right. Human eye. Just, we're going to go to page 382 on this one. 
Okay, so my goal here is to not wear you down, but also show you the best and give you all the most important information here. So this is a cool figure of a human eye. Um, in this, I'm gonna try to see beyond it here, the eye is covered by a thin transparent <clears throat> um, substance called the cornea. You see the cornea, it's all the way around, it's all the way around. And it protects the eye from abrasions and scratches. Um, and um, also, um, parent substance, see here. Um, I can participate in focusing of light and ref by refracting light that enters the eye. So it's a help, it helps in the focusing. Now the iris, this is your color of your eyes. This person has blue eyes. You can tell it's a real human being there. Um, uh, you might have um, brown eyes or hazel eyes or green eyes or one eye of one color and one eye of another. Um, have you ever met anybody like that? It's really neat. Um, that is the iris that you're looking at when you look at the color of a person's eye. Um, it is a cover that can open up wide or close down to just a small hole and that's, its job is to regulate how much light gets into the eye. Okay, um, the um, pupil is the black part in the middle <clears throat> and um, when you're in the presence of bright light the iris closes down to just a little bit of light into the eye that makes the pupil small. It looks small. And when there's just a little light, the iris opens wide, allowing a larger amount of light in. That makes your pupils look large. You can actually play with this and, and go from a light room to a dark room or vice versa and watch your what looks like your pupil dilating. It's also your iris covering and uncovering it, your pupil. Once light enters the pupil, it is focused by a converging lens. <clears throat> um, see the lens right there? It looks like a contact lens, only that's not where you put a contact lens. <laughs> that's the actual lens and of your eye, converging lens. Um, the light is focused on the retina, which is made up of light sen sensitive um, cells called rods and cones. The retina is this part on the outside, it goes around. And when these cells sense light hitting them, they send electrical messages down the optic nerve to the brain, which decodes the messages and forms them into images. Um, one thing that's left out, um, I did a little extra research on, on the eye because I'm, I'm intrigued by this topic, um, is um, there's a really important part of it that they, didn't, they left out. It's called the fovea. And I put a dot here about where the fovea would be. And the fovea is um, the ideal spot for your, um, for your focal point. It's the optimal focus spot on the retina. So it's just a spot on the retina called the fovea. All right. Um, okay, so that's, um, we don't really talk about rods and cones on that, and no, that was what they really wanted us to do, so, um, I think we come back to rods and cones a little more detail later, yes we do. Okay, so we're going to talk about, um, nearsightedness and farsightedness and that. So this is what a healthy eye does. Let's see, is an image, any image, and top to bottom of it, and it, it focuses it on the fovea. Okay, and um, it would be upside down in the image. You can kind of see really close that's an upside down apple. However, um, it um, your brain knows to um, flip, that, flip that around again. And myopia is, is another word for nearsightedness. Um, <clears throat> your eye can use... Um, it's ciliary area muscle to change the lens enough to keep the objects of um, image of objects close to you focused on the retina. However, as the object moves farther and farther away, the lens focal point cannot be changed enough to keep the image there. So um, it's um, we I am see here I'm nearsighted like this, so I'm myopic, and um, I can see up close. I can read just fine. I don't have my glasses on right now because I've been reading with you guys. But as soon as I get up from this table, I go find my glasses and I stick them on because I need them to fix anything I want to see beyond about six feet away from me, maybe eight feet. And somewhere in that, that range of distance, I, I, things start getting blurry for me. And so my glasses, they don't look quite like that, but you can see my glasses here. I always have them nearby. 
Um, they look like normal glasses, but um, this is what's so amazing. It's optometrist. Um, they they can um, they they have machines that probably do all of this. They just program them nowadays. But um, <clears throat> that is how they um, correct my um, myopia, and it helps. Um, let's see here. Was it convert? Let's see, diverge. So it's a divergence lens. Yeah, di diverge those. Um, all of the the light rays and um, things you're seeing into uh, right where they need to be seen on the retina, right on the fovea. Okay, so and the hyperopia is the opposite. Um, they can focus better farther away, but once things get to closer and closer and closer, things start to go out of focus for them um, because it's going beyond their um, fovea. And so, um, so their converging lenses correct that. Okay, so we are now on the bottom of page 319. We've got the um, primary colors of light. And I really wanna focus on, everybody knows their primary colors probably, red, yellow, and blue. But these are called the primary colors of light and they are additive primary colors, okay? And they are different because light rays don't work in the same way as um, the reflective, subtractive primary colors that is closer to what we're used to for um, the blue, magenta, or red, and yellow. We call it that as, as if they are the primary colors, but cyan, magenta, and yellow um, are the subtractive primary colors, and they are reflective. All right, these can be added together to make any color. And how on earth can you do that? Let's look at a color wheel for additive primary. This is just fascinating. <clears throat> We're going to come back. I don't think they ever covered rods and cones in this thing very well, so we may have to go back to the rods and cones. Um, <clears throat> and they kind of go hand in hand with what we're talking about, so that works. Um, so figure 10.43 here on page 386 in the textbook shows um, these are the additive primary colors of um, light. And we've, how on earth can you mix green and red and make yellow? And, and likewise for these and these, and they like are lighter colors. How does that even work? Well, <clears throat> um, these are like a spectrum. Imagine this is, this goes from the darkest of dark green with black added to it, like tons of black and a tiny bit of green all the way down to um, tons of white with a tiny bit of green. It's the lightest green. And <clears throat> likewise, um, for red would be all of the things on the colors that are on the um, um, in the rainbow <clears throat> that are not green, <clears throat> that are not blue or violet, um, <clears throat> but maybe like um, orange and, and red. And, and all of those colors are on a spectrum with black and white and added to it. And, <clears throat> and so when you mix a very, very, very light red and a very very light green <clears throat> these things um they can cancel out the um well they can create the yellow and as you can see here three parts red two parts green and things like that and so this is how they um they combine and make things and um these are see-through light rays and this is only true for um, like screens. So the computer screens um, work this way and um, TV screens and things like this. And so um, anything that's shining light out of it and that's how those, um, those combine and how our brains read them. And I didn't understand this quite. And I was really struggling with it. So I looked online and I learned that and I knew a good place to write this or draw this. So I'm gonna do it over here. Um, <clears throat> Let's see here. So we have red, whoops, how about I show you what I'm doing? Red wavelengths. And we have green wavelengths. I think these are closer together. And 
our eyes, when we see those coming out of a TV screen, it registers them as yellow. Why would our brains do such a thing? Well, let me show you in the rods and cones why they would do such a thing. Because we only have, <clears throat> this is why those TVs work this way, I'm doing this kind of backwards. Um, <clears throat> they, they work that way because they know that the brain and the, is wired to, to only receive these colors. Sorry, if it wasn't clear there. This is a section of the retina. The retina is that outer part of the eyeball here. Okay, and these are rods, rod cells, and these are cone cells. See, they look shaped a little bit more like a, it looks like a Christmas ornament, like, like those lights on your Christmas tree. The Christmas lights. In England, we call them fairy lights. There you go, little fairy lights. And um, they only come in three colors. They only come in red, green, and blue. And... Um, and our brains don't, um, when they see a combination of red and green um, wavelengths coming in, light waves coming in at the same time, they, our brains register yellow. That's not necessarily what's happening every time you see yellow. It's just when we see them coming off of TVs and things like that. Um, if you see yellow here, um, like for instance, my wall in my house is extremely yellow. I have <laughs> yellow, 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 uh, lots of yellow. Um, that is your brain actually registering the color yellow. Um, but because we don't have rods and cones, it's uh, like meaning it's, um, that would be a yellow wavelength coming in, not red and green. I didn't paint my wall with red and green and get yellow. Um, those are actual yellow wavelengths um, uh, that are reflecting off of um, my wall, okay? Um, so those are, um, but my brain, since it only has red, green, and blue cones to register the colors that are coming in, um, it, would, it would interpret them as um, red, green, and they would use those, those specific cone cells to interpret it as, to my brain as yellow. So I hope that's clear. Clear as mud, huh? Brown mud, which you would have to, wow. <laughs> We're talking a lot of colors here now. Um, what do those cones do? Those, uh, or the, the rods, I'm sorry, the rods. Well, they focus on the black and whites and um, shapes and things like that. And so when you're in a darker room, they work a lot harder. Um, so that's their job. So the cones are for colors. The rods are more for blacks and whites. Okay. Oh, okay. So um, this is the color wheel as most of us know it from art class because we usually work with reflective um, uh, things. We work with um, paints and markers and and crayons and, and anything like that. And those are just reflecting the light that... Um, that helps us our eyes see it and so when you mix a whole bunch of colors and together you're going to get black or brown when you mix a whole bunch of those colors you're not going to get white like you do in the additive um okay so if you were doing a a class and um uh let's see here what is it called um design um like your design web page design things like that you might maybe need to know this kind of stuff more if you're um doing graphic design that's what i was looking for graphic design online on a computer things like that so um that's the difference between the two so let's see what's left oh my goodness i think we're almost done all right, suppose you have two flashlights, last page 320. Suppose you have two flashlights and you cover the first with green cellophane, which is like plastic wrap, and you shine it on a mirror. When you look at the mirror, you see a green spot of light. If you were then to take the second flashlight, cover it with red cellophane and shine it on the same part of the mirror on which the green spot is still shining, what color would you see? Well, since the mirror reflects all wavelengths of light, you would see green first, then red, and when you combine them, you'd see yellow. That's the focus, the, the trick here is to notice that they're using a mirror um, to see the green spot of light. And so that's shining the light 
out and you're we're um and the, the fact that we're using flashlights and we're changing the color of the wavelengths that are coming out of the flashlights we're basically creating our own little tvs so that's um you're adding your brain would add them and see yellow okay um down here um we have um, or more of a reflection example here. You take a red shirt and put it in a dark room and flashlight, cover it with green cellophane and go to the dark and um, you would go into the dark room, sorry, and what color would you see? The dye on the shirt uses, quote, like, this is the key here, the subtractive primary colors to make its light. Well, if it's subtractive colors, we go over to this right here and we've got red and green combining to make black and that is the answer right there is we would see black we'd hardly even see the shirt at all because of that so that's the answer to that and i hope you enjoyed learning about the amazing miracle of the eye and um oh I think this is really good right here well televisions and computer monitors generate light that shines into your eyes paints and dyes reflect light into your eyes no dramatic difference so that's key there okay so good work, everybody, and thanks for coming. All right, take care. Bye-bye.